Welcome to the 23rd uh, edition of the Valence Developer Diaries. Today, we're gonna go over two things, some form field set changes that were uh, created in uh, a recent release. And we're also going to show you how to create a, an application that has a side navigation menu um, that was asked on a forum post. So that's how we got the idea to do this one. Um, so first, the form field set changes. So previously, in a form field set, you could either go top down or left to right. Um, and you know, obviously, like in the case of an address, neither option really works out well because you know, one, I'd like to have all my fields, but some of them I want top down, some of them I want left to right. And if I go top down, you know, obviously everything is just, it's just one field per, per row here. Um, if I were to go left to right, there's no way I could even fit everything if I wanted to, nor would I want address one, two, and country on the same line as city, state, zip. So with the, with the new changes, um, you'll be able to accomplish field sets like this. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then the second part, will be uh, an application that uses a side navigation menu um, to drive the application. So, you know, the user would, uh, would click this button and then this navigation would show and then they would click the section that they wanna go to. So that's what we'll do last. So first, I'm going into an older version of Valence um, that did not have the latest field set changes. So let me just, Let's just show how it how it used to be. I'm just going to make all of these editable here. And I'm going to create a field set. Address one, address two, city, state, zip, country. And I want them vertically, and I'm going to give it a title of address. Okay. So just like we had in that little wireframe, all I can do is go top down. I could change it to be horizontal and that's gonna really look bad because it's gonna try and squeeze everything in. So let's go to the new version. I'm gonna create a widget here, form. Let's just take all these address two city, state, country, and zip. And I'll create my field set. Address one, two, city, state, zip, country. Okay, and let me give it a title, address. Let's just take a look at it. Okay. So notice there's a new um, field here, number of columns. So I'm just gonna put a, I'll put a two in here and let's just see what that does. So now it's one, two, one, two, one, two, okay. Let's change it to three. So now it puts it in three. And really what I want, I want this, I want my address line one and line two to be on their own line. So if I click the little settings here, it'll ask me how many columns do I wanna span? I could put in four, but that wouldn't make sense because the maximum is three because I, I told it on that previous screen, three. So let's just see what that looks like. So three. Oh, let me make these editable because then it's easier to, to see the lengths and everything. That'll make it look better more obvious, I should say. Okay, line two, I want that to span three columns as well. Okay, now address city state, let me, let me clean up some of these uh, labels here. So address one, address two, city, state, Sure. 
okay i want this I, this i want all of these on the same line but you know maybe i want state to not be as large so let me just go here and i'm going to put a width on it i'll put a fixed width of 100 pixels okay and then country i want it to look just like these other two i want a full column i want it to span all three columns you know i could put it to two we could just see what that looks like but I'm gonna make it go all the way to three. So really, I guess the rule of thumb is in your field set, you would set your column number to any row, you know, the max amount of fields you want in any row. And then you could just tweak the other rows to however you want them, okay? So that's it for the form field set changes. Now I'm going to go into the uh, side navigation app. And if there are any questions, just throw them in the chat and um, you know I'll, I'll get to them after all of this. So we're going to create a new app. So I think I created a couple sample widgets. Title, um, this, uh, side nav demo. So I'm going to add a couple sections here. Uh, I'm going to call this section two, and I'm going to call this section three. Let me add a widget in section two, and let me add a widget in section three. Okay. So for now, let me just save this. Let me just make sure it all works. So I can have demo, sure. And let me bring it up. Okay. So we know we have you know three sections here. I can't get to any of them yet. Um, so let's let's add the button up here to access our navigation. We'll start with that. So I'm gonna go into my side nav demo app and I'm gonna go into behaviors and I'm gonna be adding all of these buttons at the application level. So let me find a good icon for menu, go menu. And I do, I want it at the top and I want it all the way on the left. So let me just save that. I'm not gonna put any action to it yet. And let's just reload this and see what it looks like. Okay, so when I click this, I want a navigation menu to slide out here, okay? So let's uh, continue on. So I'm gonna add some more buttons. I'm just collapsing what I don't want to look at. I'm gonna add another button here and I'm just gonna call it section one. And I don't want it to be at the top level. I want it to be at the left, okay? When I changed it to left, notice my alignment blanked out. If I go back to, if I go back to top, I could either align it to right or left. If I'm gonna align my button to the left, or if the position's gonna be to the left, I'm gonna have it on the left of the app, I need to tell, do I want it at the top or bottom? So I'm gonna put top. Uh, let me just find an icon here. Just do uh, number maybe number one. Okay, so there's one button. I'm going to add another button for section two. Section two, same thing on the left. Align at the top, and my section three button. Left top numbers three okay let's just save this and see what this looks like i'm going to change my theme too just to make it look a little different okay so now we've got 
you know, our, our, our menu here on the left. Obviously, I don't have any actions here when I click it. Um, so let's let's put those actions in now. Let's do that. So uh, when I click section one, I'm going to hide show widgets. I'm going to make sure that this is shown. I'll load the data each time and I make sure that both of these are hidden. Okay, so that's section one. Section two on click, I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to hide the main, show, hide. And then section three, same thing. So let's hide, hide, and show. Let's just test it out. Okay, section two, section three, section one. Okay. Uh, now let's work on having, oh, I want this hidden until they click this. So let's do that next. You know, alternately, I, you know, you, you may decide that you just want this showing all the time, which you could do as well. But I, I want to, I want to hide mine. So the way I would do that is I'm going to create an app variable. Uh, I'm going to call it hide nav buttons. Okay. And I'm going to set the initial value to true because I want I want them hidden immediately. Okay. So now if I go back into behaviors and click on each button, all the way in the bottom here, I could, you know, I, I create a new app variable that I can uh, link it. So anytime hide nav buttons is true, it's going to hide this button. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to every button here. Okay, so let's save it and let's reload it. So now I'd expect that whole that whole left nav to not even show. Okay, good. Now, when I click it, I want it to show. So when I click this menu button, so all I'm going to do when I click that menu button is I'm just going to change that that hide navs button app variable to false. So on click, just, so of our menu button on click, set app variables, and set it to false. I could probably just do this too. But I'm just going to be more explicit. I'm just setting it to false. Okay, save. Let's try that out. So now when I click this, okay, now it shows. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is I know that I'm on section one right now. Um, so I don't want this button to be clickable. Okay, any section that we're on, it doesn't make sense for them to be able to click on that button again. And then additionally, when they click a different section, I want this menu bar to go away again. I want the side neck. So, so let's so let's do that. I'm gonna go back into App Builder and I'm gonna create a couple new, a few new app variables. Um, because basically what I want to do is I want to disable, I want the ability to disable these buttons. So app variables, I'm going to create a new one. Disable section one button. And section one is the initial section that we show. So by default, this should be disabled. So I'm going to set it to true right away. Okay, so I'm going to create another one. Disable section two button. That will not be true. And disable section three button. Okay, so now I've created these app variables. Now I want to link them to the buttons. So I'm going to go back to each button, section one, disable if this is true. Okay, 
section two button. Same thing, but I'm going to choose the section two button at variable and section three. Okay. Let's just see what that does now. Um, you know, I'd expect when we load this app that, and I show the menu that this button will be disabled. Section one, because remember I defaulted that value to true. Okay, good, and it's disabled. Okay. Okay, so now let's work on when I click another section. So if I click section two, section one button should be enabled. You know, it shouldn't be disabled any longer. Section two button should be disabled. Section three should be enabled and the menu should hide away. Okay. So let's work on the uh, section one click first. So I'm already hiding showing widgets and they're you know, showing the section. In addition, I wanna set some app variables. So disable section one button. True, because when I just clicked on it and it switched to that section, I don't want to be able to click on it again. So I'm going to disable it. I'll set this to false, this to false, and hide nav buttons to true. Okay. Let me do section two as well. Set app variables. So if I clicked on the section two button, the section one button should be, you know, it should be available. It should not be disabled. So I'll set that to false. Section two would be true. I want to disable it. This would be false. And then I also want to hide my nav buttons. And let's just do section three right away. So false, false. True. You know, maybe also we'll put in here in our nav info. So notice on nav info, this will display a message in the snack bar. I'll just say, you know, switched to section three. Let me just go here and put that on this guy too. Switch to section two. Just in case it's not obvious that we're switching sections. Switch to section one. Okay, let's try it all out. Okay. Section two, switch to section two. Now that's disabled, this is enabled. Back to section one, go to section three. All right, I think we got it all going. So, you know, obviously you could add as many sections as you wanted, as many, you know, widgets in each section as you need, um, but that's really all there is to it. So any questions? Uh, I see Ron asked, what version introduces the new columns? Good question. Uh, let me. So I'm just going to go to cnxcorp.com. I'm going to go to forums and the framework framework release history, valence six. And I'm just going to search here. I'm hoping that I'll see something about field set. Let's correct an issue. Uh, Let's see, columns maybe, how about form? Let me start at the top here. Just as that Okay, that was uh, 2021-1107. Field groups now allow for multiple rows. Yes, the new version is, and Ron also asked, is the new version uh, fully backwards compatible with pre previous versions? Yes.
All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I think we'll uh, just end it at that. And if anybody has any suggestions for things you'd like to see, um, just you know, either email us at support at cnxcorp.com or maybe post something in the forum. And everyone have a good rest of the day. Thank you.